And for those of you who are sticking around, welcome to The View. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. We've got to like get a theme song. We've got to get a theme song. I know. That's what I'm thinking too. We need some sort of better transition. <laughs> like some really cheesy, like public domain music that's sort of of the style of a 70s game show. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> like da 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 <laughs> da 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 da. Yeah. No. Yeah. Can you can you talk to your daughter about creating yeah. something on the ukulele for it us? Might, it might involve Petey the puppet as well. So we'll see. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> you know, Petey, Petey's going to make an appearance this Christmas. Yes. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. Petey's awesome. <laughs> hey, Denise, um, I was noticing that you're wearing a blue sweater, and I was wondering if that was in honor of um, Mary. This is actually my Advent sweater. So it's, uh, you've seen it before. <laughs> so, um, yes, in honor of Mary, yes. <laughs> but it is my advent color, so. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, um, I, I actually was realizing like I don't have anything purple. So it is freezing in the sanctuary right now. Like my nose and my hands and feet are like totally cold. So Brenna, bless her heart, she brought me my coat, oh, good. which is actually kind of purple. So wow. yeah, anyway, okay. that's specific. Yeah. I remember, I remember there was somebody, um, a priest who used to always paint her toenails the liturgical color. Wow. The season. Yeah, it's important to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to start doing that. <laughs> I thought I thought we all could. The clergy of St. Peter's could start like painting our, our nails. As long as it's the toenails, I'm okay. I just don't want to do my fingernails. Yeah. Cool. yeah, really. Really. Michael, didn't you get a pet? Did you get a pedicure? Yeah, I got a pedicure the day before Monday Thursday, so okay, that when yes. my wash, they were all like clean, and uh, mm -hmm. and I had um, general seminary blue. So it freaked out my students. They're like, "Oh my gosh, the dean's got blue toenails!" <laughs> oh, it's hysterical. I love that. <laughs> you know, Michael. Sometimes, like, there's some artists who do toenail art. Oh, you could get like the logo of wow. Jekyll's that little shield. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, my, my big toenail is probably large enough to fit it on there. So <laughs> maybe with an inscription and, you know, a little explanation of what this. Yeah. Is. Yeah. And then instead of clipping that toenail, I could just rip the whole thing out and then keep it on a wall. That could be like a, a relic. <laughs> yes. I know people, people would like make pilgrimages. Yes. yes. With the, the sacred toenail of right. Dean Michael <laughs> DeRushler. <laughs> Um, Martha Lee is asking, did they think it was a disease or disorder and not just nail polish? No, it was clear. My, my, my feet were, uh, were on point. They were on point. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a wonderful segue uh, from toenails to talking, inviting our uh, <laughs> surprise guest on. Um, so, oh, oh, here she is. <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> We're all surprised. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> it's Leslie Paik. <laughs> Yay. I'm not sure when the on, but then the blue toenails <laughs> got me distracted. So I am. Uh, wait. <laughs> Leslie was like, we just need to put an end to this conversation. <laughs> anyway. I don't know. Did you have anything to add to that, Leslie, of the toenail genre? No, no, nothing to add. No, yeah. I mean the relic part got me a little. Uh, <laughs> was up there with a cat hat, hat expression? So I. Oh, that yeah. was terrible. <laughs> I mean, I have to say that you know my dog sheds a lot, and someone has several people have asked me if I would make a sweater out of his hair. Um, to which I've always said no, but. Um, <laughs> you know what Leslie never say never it's true I mean I he is 12 and I love him to death and you know I think about what might happen after he's gone so yeah. that's a nice memento I'm not sure I would wear it outside anywhere but. <laughs> no, I, I guess I, I should I should dial back my response to the cat hat because I mean I, I get how you know pets are really important to us I just think like if yeah. it gets wet like how bad would a cat or a dog garment smell <laughs> Yeah, true. <laughs> Although, thankfully, my dog doesn't smell yet. So, hopefully. okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to say anything bad about the cat hat. I, I think it's great. 
Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, there's no there's no hate for the cat hat. No, it's, yeah. It was just surprised. It was shot. It, it just like, it shocked me. I, I did like how you managed to get the screenshot of Denise's face for that email that you sent out. I, exactly that moment. Like, wow, that's pretty technologically savvy there. So. I know, that was quite amazing. All right, well, <laughs> more, well Gregory is saying, um, thank you, Leslie, for saving us from more of uh, the toenail talk. Oh, yes. And when Martha is saying that when Steve goes to Jesus, that he will take all of him with him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's good too. Yeah. All right. Well, shall we jump in? Sure. Let's see. Okay. So um, these are 10 rapid fire questions. So just um, whatever pops into your head. So the first question is Do you have any fond? Christmas traditions that your family celebrated while you were growing up, or even now, presently? No. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and actually, you know what, I realized, that, oh, go ahead. I will say that, I mean, yeah, so my family's not that big on traditions, gift giving, or we're not very sentimental, but I will say that at some point we started going to the candlelight Christmas Eve service. So if there was ever a tradition we've done for more than two years in a row, that would be one of them. Okay. Or probably the only one, so I'll say that. Okay, very cool, very cool. So, so what was the last show that you binge watched? Um, what did I binge watch? So I watched Virgin River on Netflix. I don't know if anyone watches those, but is it good? I don't think you'd like it, but I I enjoyed it. <laughs> it's, it's called Virgin River. Yes, it has nothing to do with anything related to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can, can you give us like a quick, like what it's about? You know, it's embarrassing to admit that I did that, but, um, but whatever. Uh, so, um, because I didn't realize till after I watched it that it's based on these romance novels. So I, which I don't read, I promise you, but it, um, <laughs> There's no judgment. There's no judgment. It's true, I don't have a cat hat. But um, anyway, it, um, so sorry, um, so sorry. Uh, no, um, so it's, a, it's, it's based in this small town and this uh, woman moves there after losing her husband from, she moves from the big city to a small town. It's kind of like those Hallmark movies, but not. Um, so the scenery is really beautiful. Um, and uh, it's about her sort of getting over her grief and living in a small town and yeah. all of that. Oh, that sounds good. Virgin River, everyone check it out. Um, <laughs> it's also always, uh, six episodes or seven episodes so it's not one of those things that you spend all weekend um, oh, I like those yeah those are good so, it. so I watched that and then also I watched The Crown so that's mm. yeah I just finished that so yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> although this one this season's so depressingly sad that it, it's it's kind of I, I had to I couldn't binge watch it because it was like too much pain and sadness so um, I know. insert Virgin River <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> okay um leslie so if you could eat at only one restaurant in new york city for the rest of your life which yeah. one would it be so i have to admit i thought about this from last week when you asked that question um because you know um so i haven't actually eaten here in a while but um i would say hanbat on 35th street because it's a korean restaurant that had because I would want to eat Korean food, but there's not one. So that restaurant has sort of good a good array of all different types of Korean food from like a more sort of home cooking kind of sense. So I would mm -hmm. I would say that. Yeah, that's solid solid choice. Solid really and they're really we go there when we want. Have you guys heard of jajangmyeon? It's like a I think it's originally it's like a Chinese noodle, but it's basically like noodles with oh, imagine like like ramen noodles but with black bean sauce. Um, and it's really delicious. And oftentimes I'll have like chunks of like beef or pork in there. And then like Koreans usually eat it with like this, um, this like very bright yellow pickled radish called takwang, and then just like raw onions. Wow. Like you just <laughs> eat with loved ones. Yes. 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 Loved ones after. I didn't realize they had jajangmyeon there. I always went next door to the, um, one of those Chinese Korean restaurants that wasn't very good. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna to have to go back and, and try it. Yes. All right, so the next question is, um, all right, so what is your anti-pet peeve? 
Do you remember um, from last week? So the technical definition of an anti-pet peeve, it's the opposite of a pet peeve, a tiny thing in life that brings you an exponential amount of joy. Yeah. Um, you know, again, I, it's hard to think of one. Um, I mean, I guess I think about those random acts of kindness that people do for you when like they send you a text or something, they're just like, oh, we were just thinking of you or something really small like that. Um, mm -hmm where you remember, you feel remembered or loved and yes. whatever small thing that could be. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 that's, that's a good one. I mean, it's a, it's a small thing, but it makes a difference when people text you something encouraging. Yeah. yeah. I forget Denise and Michael, I may have asked you before, but have, have, do you guys have an anti pet peeve? We may have talked about it previously. No, I don't think, um, I don't think I've thought of mine yet. Let me think. Yeah. Um, it's hard to answer that one. <laughs> well, I, I would say that, um, and and I, I, I don't I don't pronounce this correctly, but I do those uh, Sudoku puzzles, mm -hmm. and um, I'm on level hard. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so it's so it's easy, medium, and hard. So that's that's where I am. Wow. wow. Yeah. So um, if I and I do it with and I go by the timer, so I always try to beat my time. That's how I know I'm doing better. Mm -hmm. So if I beat my time, that's just you know. Yeah, so satisfying. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess, you know, what comes to mind, and I'm kind of stealing it from you, Christine, but it's it's like it's subway related. So you know when you have to do a transfer between trains, like you know, you need to go from the C to the E or something like that. And it's a cross platform thing. Mm -hmm. And that moment where both doors open and you can just like run <laughs> and walk across walk across right to the next connecting train as yeah. if like nothing happened, especially if it's an express train. Like yeah. if you're if you're going like from the one to the two or the three or something like that, mm -hmm. oh, it's yeah. like the city has just given me 15 minutes. It's a game. <laughs> it's the world is just there for you. Yeah, it's like a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. It is so satisfying. Totally satisfying. And the random acts of kindness is pig piggyback on that. When you are there and then the conduct the subway conductor sees you and opens the door for you, yes. that, I mean, that's, that not is, small. that's a huge act of kindness. That is being seen. Like you <laughs> see me. You see me. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes sometimes it's the opposite. When you know that the conductor sees you coming down, he's just like, psh, he just like hits that button. He's like, I don't even care. But both a pet peeve and anti-pet peeve. Oh, yes. <laughs> In one button. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Well, Leslie, if you could give your 13-year-old self a piece of advice, what would it be? Oh, um, not to be so worried about what other people think about you. Mm. That's like piece of advice for now. Yeah. <laughs> when you're 48. Uh -oh. yeah, I remember someone in grad school gave me this, it, it was like a book of, I, I can't remember anything about it, but it was like some New York Times writer, journalist wrote like these different sayings, kind of like an Irma Bombeck kind of thing. Um, but the one, it, it was like, no one's thinking about you, which sounds mean, but then you read the explanation and it's like, you, know, you go in and you're being incredibly self-conscious and you're thinking like, oh, am I dressed appropriately? Is, is there something in my teeth? Whatever. And, and it sort of affects or limits your sense of self or whatever. And the whole thing is like, it's really funny. I'm saying like, basically, if you realize no one's thinking about you, realize they're thinking you're thinking that about that, like they're thinking the same thing as you, right? So you think, oh, everyone's looking at me, but they're thinking the same thing. So just let it go and just be who you are and, mm -hmm. and not worry about it, um, which yeah. is a really helpful thing. That's good. That's good advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just really quick um, for the next question. Melissa said that her anti-pet peeve is when you're buying only one or two items from the grocery store and the person in front of you with a lot of groceries lets you go ahead. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. So That's beautiful. That's oh. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, and it's also a very hard one to pay forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, personally. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you get more things. You know? <laughs> 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 okay so um what do you do when you're scared but trying to be brave um what do i do okay no, last time I, I take a deep breath mm -hmm. uh and then i take another one <laughs> <laughs> um and then i pray 
Mm-hmm. And know that, you know, it'll, whatever happens, I'll still be, I'll still come out on the other side. Unless it's like a life or death situation where I'm not entirely sure, but generally speaking, you know, 